Have you considered that you believe you're Mary Magdalene because of false memory syndrome or mind control? I've examined the issues related to false memory or the experiences of people on Earth who've had what's now considered to be false memory syndrome and also mind control. And I have to say that I've never really entertained this as a possibility for me. A lot of people seem to be very concerned about it and that I have been somehow mind controlled or have false memories. But I've, after examining what has happened on Earth with regards to false memory and mind control, I'm really confident that those things are not, haven't happened to me and are not happening to me. But I can elaborate a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> um, people who experience false memories are usually, they've usually been placed in a state of hypnosis or some kind of guided imagery or meditation. And it's often happened in the context of a therapeutic uh, situation with a counsellor or a, or a psychologist or someone. And uh, the person has suddenly recovered, uh, and I put that in inverted commas, a memory of something quite traumatic or momentous that's happened in their past that prior to that point they hadn't had any recollection or feelings about. The truth of what's actually happening in those cases is that people are being influenced by spirits. They're being given the experiences of spirits from the spirits. And the spirits are attracted through this process. And usually the person on earth has a desire to avoid something within themselves. And this is what allows this interaction to happen with the spirit. But often the person on earth is avoiding some other pain they're avoiding a sense of feeling overlooked sometimes. Sometimes they have a desire for attention or a desire to distract themselves from mm -hmm. some other pain. Because they have that feeling, they become open to a spirit coming along and giving them some of the spirit's experience of what happened to them on Earth. That's a very emotional experience for that person on Earth and they then think, oh, this is a memory that I've had. The way that this cannot have happened to me <laughs> is that firstly, I've never been hypnotised. Yeah. I'm really crap at meditation <laughs> and guided <laughs> imagery. I, I would always be lying there going, oh, imagine the white gate. And it, was, you know, <laughs> it was a really hard thing for me to do so. And, and I have actually, because of the level, <laughs> the level of fears inside of me, I also have a really strong desire to stay in control of my body. Yeah. So I've always been really um, cautious about what's happening around me. And um, I can't, even as a medium, I find it difficult to trance, to give a spirit um, that much control of my body, that it's a complete trance mediumship. Um, I very much want to be in control and I'm not very open to suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, in that, that instance alone, in that um, example alone, I've never actually been hypnotised or placed myself in a situation where um, things can be suggested to me. Um, AJ and I don't meditate. We don't even discuss m the memories that I've had before I had them and even for some time after sometimes. Uh, so there hasn't ever been this kind of suggestive process where I'm sort of allowing, opening myself up to things without a conscious knowledge of what's going on around me. Yeah. Also, as I mentioned, things that commonly happen with people who have this false memory syndrome, I mentioned that they're usually trying to avoid something else that's occurring <coughs> in their life. So something that has actually happened to them that they feel afraid of or pain about or uncomfortable about or that they don't want to feel some aspect of their life. And so this memory, they're open to having another experience almost to distract them or to, get, to have some other deeper sort of addictive desire met within them. Um, that's how they manifest this experience. For AJ and myself, and what we advocate to everyone, is that we deal with everything in our life that's happened. So for myself, in this process of now growing again towards God, developing myself in love, um, I am I'm aiming to deal with not only the emotions associated with the memories of my first century life and life in the spirit world, but all of the things that have happened in the last 34 years. So there's no sense of... A, of avoiding this life yeah. 
by distracting myself with some other memories or emotions. I've certainly spent a lot of time in the last five years dealing with dynamics in my childhood, with my family, and various other things socially and how I feel about the world I'm in right now and things that have happened. So there's no sense that I, this, this experience is distracting me from some other yeah. deeper pain or fulfilling some desire for attention or glory because, <laughs> oh, we may attract some level of attention. Um, certainly not very glorified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have quite negative feelings about us and because I'm being honest about this experience that I'm having. Yeah. yeah. So in that regard, um, I feel that false memory syndrome is just not... It's, I've never even entertained it as, a, as a, an idea of something that might be happening to me. AJ's never suggested anything to me and as I mentioned in a previous answer, I've been pretty strict on him about what I will and won't talk to him about, especially in the beginning when we first met, where I was feeling somewhat, um, well, I was feeling very resistive to this idea and I didn't ever want there to be a shadow of a doubt inside of me mm. that something could have been suggested to me. I wanted to be sure of myself and my own experience and, and I do feel that now. And that's a lot because, you know, partly because I just told him I don't want you to even talk to me about what you remember of our life together, or if we even had a life together in my... Uh, yeah, that's yeah. the feelings that I have then. To find out for yourself, for yeah. real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With regards to mind control, so this is also something that uh, I get accused of a lot, of being controlled by AJ and that somehow he's found some chink in my subconscious that has made me somehow invested in believing this or maintaining a relationship with him and that that's a condition of our relationship that I believe that I'm Mary Magdalene mm. or various other things that people accuse me of and a lot of times people don't even really elaborate they just say oh you're controlled and to be honest I think it's a very very convenient way for them to dismiss me. They just say, oh, she's just someone without a mind of her own and she's controlled by this, this charismatic leader and, you know, therefore we don't have to listen to anything that she says or take any notice of her experience. So... It's pretty, pretty harsh. Yeah, <laughs> it is pretty harsh, actually. It yeah. is, yeah. But it's not, it's not true. No, no. <laughs> um, and there's probably... a fair few things I could say about, I think what typically happens to people who are mind controlled, uh, from what I've read about it, is that they often have a feeling that that love or approval from the person who's doing the controlling is conditional on them believing a certain set of things or feeling a certain way about them. Now, that is definitely not the case between AJ and I. Mm -hmm. Um, I've actually had a lot of quite negative feelings towards him throughout the last five years because a lot of my fears were being brought up by this experience and I wanted someone to blame. Yeah. I, I blamed him a lot. I was quite harsh on him on an, like countless occasions, really, if I'm very honest. I was critical of the way he taught, of the way he looked, of the way he lived his life. I, I tried to find holes in everything because I just wanted to avoid the, the pain and fear that was being exposed within myself through this set of circumstances. Mm. Throughout all of that, he never wavered in his love for me. And he has said to me on many occasions that if I don't want to be with him, that's okay with him, <laughs> that he doesn't have that. And he is really okay with that now, you know. I I know that inside of him, that he would go on teaching divine truths and... He's had some sadness at times when I've said that I don't want to be with him because that has happened on numerous occasions throughout our relationship. He's had sadness to feel, but he's never made that sadness my problem or tried to make me feel guilty about that. He's, and, and now I, I feel he's reached a point where he, he wouldn't even really be sad. He mm. still desire to be with me, but it's not, it's not going to stop him going for what he wants. And you look up. He views me as his, as his partner, as his lover, as his soulmate, not as someone who is subservient to him. And he doesn't promote me feeling subservient to him. 
I certainly don't think that he's God or mm. all-knowing or all-perfect <clears throat> or all-powerful. I don't have any of those feelings. And a lot of people who find themselves in situations where they are controlled in some way, th often they have given over their sense of their reasoning, what they think, working through things for themselves, and they've decided that the person in charge is the person with all knowledge and that they have none and they have no ability to gain any. Now, for myself, I've... I know that all truth comes from God, <laughs> not from AJ. He has more... Tr he can reflect more truth right now and I listen to him a lot, but not in... If I don't agree with him, <laughs> I tell him, you know, and he knows that and he respects that about me, actually. He encourages me to have my own experience and to resolve things for myself. And in fact, there's been many times where he said, actually, you haven't, you're agreeing with me. You're, you're giving me like what I call lip service. You're saying yes, when you haven't actually sorted out this emotionally for yourself, whatever that may have been, a decision to do something, a desire or a feeling about the, the, the way we were gonna live our life or what we were gonna do. There's been times when I've just said, yes, yes, all right. And he said, I can't do that because you are not in agreement with me from an emotional mm. perspective. And you don't have to be, so we won't do that thing. You know, which is very different from someone holding someone else to ransom and saying, unless you agree with me, all bets are off or our life's over or you have to or I'm better or I don't have any of those kind of feelings in our relationship. So, yeah, I feel very confident that I'm, that I'm not being mind controlled and I've never felt that. No. AJ is a very humble, gentle person who's firm for what he knows and what he believes but he does ne he's never made my agreement with him mm. or my worship of him. He would find me worshipping him quite abhorrent <laughs> but he's never made my agreement with a certain set of rules or standards or or anything yeah. uh, conditional of his love for me and in addition I don't have a sense and he doesn't have a sense that I'm going to hell or I'm going to a bad place or terrible disaster will happen if I don't comply with something and this is also another way that many people are controlled. They're told that unless you do this thing, very, very bad things are going to happen to you or your family or, or you'll be in hell for, for forever or you'll, um, you know, your level of ascension will, whatever. Yeah. There's, there's kind of horrible things that I've been told that other people have been told in various different um, what I would classify as cults where women have been told that they need to sleep with a certain amount of men otherwise they won't otherwise they're displaying uh, difficulties in their spirituality and they can't reach the next level and and all I would classify that as severe manipulation and control of others yes. my life does not look anything like that <laughs> I'm, I'm really well loved and I have a my own relationship with God yeah. I know that God's loving and that God never demands sacrifice from us or demands that we deny ourselves in order to have some greater thing happen to us. In fact, the only way to have great things happen to us is to be ourselves and heal yeah. ourselves. And um, that's what AJ and I advocate for everyone around us. And it's no different within our relationship. It's cool. It's mm. cool. I'm just thinking with you, the mind control... Um, it's just fascinating in the sense that our families are the ones who are so mind controlling with the threats and the whatever and they're telling us they love us the most and yet you're accused of being mind controlled by someone who's doing the complete opposite with no threats whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. it's true. It's very common in family relationships, in a lot of organised religions as well, that people are told that unless you meet a certain set of standards or requirements or unless you do this for me on my birthday or unless you <laughs> come home for Christmas or whatever, then there's a threat. Yeah. And that is actually very controlling behaviour. I won't love you, you'll go to hell, this, this shows you're a bad person. All of these things are actually ways that we are controlled by society and our family and, and many other ways. Yeah. Um, and actually, myself and Jesus, or AJ, as he's called now, we want to expose those things as unloving. Because no, it's, God doesn't want to control us. God wants us to use our will, 
because we want to, not because we're afraid. God wants us to use our will in a loving direction because we're motivated by love within us and not fear. It's impossible, in fact, to use our will in a loving direction if we're motivated by fear. And this is why there is so much unhappiness on the planet, actually, because mm. a lot of people have reverted to using threats and um, various other emotional techniques to control themselves and others and the way the world, the world operates. And because of that, because that's actually compelling people to use their will through fear, we end up with a lot of unhappy people, both the people who do the threatening and the people who comply with the threats. So, um, yeah, it's not possible that I'm being <laughs> mind controlled because I'm actually uh, living with someone who's passionate about <clears throat> ending control on the planet and empowering people through love. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. And also, I reckon, well, I, I'm asking here, it, it might, is it pretty confronting, like, coming from a, a family in the last, you know, 30 years where you have, well... From my understanding, is and what I've read on you know what you post on the internet is yeah. that they are very controlling and manipulative and whatever, and suddenly to have someone who's expecting nothing from you, I yeah. mean that's going to definitely be quite challenging. And and maybe if we can give a bit of context here about my family, um, especially from the time that I met AJ, this sort of exposed in them a lot of their beliefs about love that were not. Mm. that aren't loving <laughs> and what, how a family should behave, which is not loving in that they felt that I should deny myself and my own experience and my own relationship in order to make them more comfortable. And that was a pretty yucky thing to happen. They were very afraid and mm. upset, but they still chose to use their will in a way that was damaging to me, it was hurtful to me and it was also quite unjust towards AJ because as you said he wasn't, he wasn't trying to control anyone, he was just being himself and being truthful and I decided that I wanted to be with him and my family told me outright that they couldn't cope with that and that he was evil um, and, which was just based on me actually making a decision for myself that did not agree with them and that's the first time in my life where I'd really made a stand for something that my parents did not agree with. And you know, I think a lot of people go through this process with their family, perhaps not their daughter meeting Jesus, but a lot of us get to a point in our lives where we realise I need to have a life mm -hmm. that does not necessarily match with that doesn't match with what, how my parents live their life, or I have different beliefs from my from my parents, and I'm going to choose a different journey or route for my life. Some people don't, some people just live in the same way that their parents have lived, but then there are many others who reach a point where they say, I'm going to do something different with my life. And parents, some parents respond with encouragement. They say, okay, that's different, it might challenge me a bit, but great, it's your life. Sadly, other parents do what my parents have done, and that mm. is to say, I can't accept that, and you're wrong, and you're bad. And um, yeah, so that's been really sad for me. And it was very confronting because I did realise how many emotional kind of contracts, I'm going to call it mm. contracts there was in my family, where I did a certain set of things and they did a certain set of things for me. So I was quite emotionally dependent upon my parents when I met AJ. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted them to reassure me about a lot of things and I was... I was a good daughter in ways that they deemed were good in return. And so breaking away from that, that's just one aspect of how many contracts there were. There was a lot of what I would call, you know, I'll give you this and you give me that. And none of that is love because it's all about barter. So when I met AJ, he's a man who does not barter. Mm. He doesn't want barter. If he finds me, and many, many times in the beginning of our relationship... I wanted barter because it made me feel secure. If I, have a, if I can give you something and then you give me something, I don't feel vulnerable or exposed. Yeah. I feel I have a role. I feel there's security and safety and surety of how this relationship's going to work. And AJ didn't want any of that. He, he found it quite oppressive and also um, 
sort of repulsive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not that he ever found me repulsive, but he would say, I don't, babe, I don't want to do that with you. Like, you don't want to be doing what you're doing for me right now and you're only doing it because you think you have to in order to get my love. I love you. You don't have to do that. That was very confronting for me. And it confronted probably the feelings of the lack of love mm. that there is in barter. And I actually got quite angry as well at many times because I wanted, I felt vulnerable. Like AJ's a man who can do everything for himself. And I wanted a man who needed me for a few things. <laughs> because otherwise, what was my importance in his life? Yeah. How would he need me? How would I feel wanted? And that's all because I was more attuned with barter than I was with open-hearted relating in a relationship. So he, he's giving me all of this love and attention and approval, but I felt like uncomfortable receiving it and certainly reciprocating it because it felt very exposed and there was no way of like securing what was going on. There was no way to say he needs me, he's not going to leave me um, because I do this thing for him. I can recognise many of those things in myself and <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> feel them both. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you for that. 